I always do this. I always mute before the show and then, okay, let's try again. Hey everyone, welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I am your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this week's topic is the real effects of UX. Um, now, before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everyone who's in the live chat room. Uh, Brian, Tamir, who's doing some uh tutorials in Arabic. So thank you so much for spreading the word about Webflow there. Uh, Josh, uh, Robert, Bob is here. Uh, Michael, yeah. Oh, and Riley's here. And congratulations, Riley, for winning the Dev Tips uh, raffle for a whole year of Webflow subscription. So congrats on that. Uh, Mikhail's here. A lot of... Fern is back. Welcome, welcome. Man, uh, a lot of you guys are back. Thank you guys so much. Ba is here. Uh, did I miss anyone? Sem. Oh, yeah. Sem was the earliest bird in the chat room. So thank you. And yeah, cool. Glad you guys can make it. Let's talk about UX. Now, uh, user experience. It's very, very important. Uh, it's important to everyone. And I know that when us designers, when we when we're designing websites, we could be a bit tunnel vision because we're like making sure that the the site is working on every browser imaginable, every device imaginable. We're making sure that the layout is exactly what the client wants. You're staying on time, on budget, uh, making sure the colors are correct and the imagery photography. So there's so many things we have to make sure works, but when that's all said and done, it's all about the, the website is all about the person who's using it on their screen. It's not just for you and the client. It's for the users that's that's going to use the website. So as designers, we should step back for a moment and look at the website and be like, is this easy enough to use? Um, Back in 2011, Google Analytics uh, produced some awesome videos that I that I feel that portrays this. Okay, so here's one of the videos I'm going to show you guys. Uh, here we go. Hey, just that, thanks. You sure? Uh, yeah. Username? Oh, uh, Nick M? No. Nope. NM 1983? No. I, uh, Zandy Pops? Sorry. <clears throat> Zandy Pops? No, okay. Don't worry, I'll help. What's your postcode? Oh, it's a GU749ZT. Welcome back, Nick, forever. Oh, okay. Please listen carefully to this bread license agreement before continuing with your purchase of a loaf of bread. If you do not, blah, blah, blah. You also agree not to use any bread-based products for any purposes prohibited by United Kingdom law, including without limitation of design, development, manufacture of missiles, chemical, nuclear, or biological weapons. Tick. I'm afraid you've timed out. What? Sorry. Hello? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Hey. Just one loaf, sir. Yeah, we just... What's your username? It's uh, Nick Forever, but number four, not the... Gotcha. Yeah. OK. I'm just going to check that you're a real person. Could you say that for me? That's not even a word. OK, how about this one? You know what? Forget it. it, it or really... this one? Uh, Hippopotamus. Nice. You're in. Great. I'm in. £8.85. It's supposed to be 98 pence. Plus express delivery. What's that? Oh, well, it's express delivery. It's fast. So there's, um... Standard. Oh, standard. Standard delivery. That's £4.99. Why? Bread insurance. You didn't untick the don't decline bread insurance option. You know what? I think I'll risk it. It is quite close to the sell-by date. Don't care. 98 pence it is. If you want to pop back in five business days, it'll be ready for your collection. Well, well I need it now, obviously. Oh, OK. Uh, you want the take-home today price? Well, that's £3.27. You know what, I'm going to go. Come back soon. I won't. So, yeah. That's what uh, I mean by UX in real life. The, the real effects. Um, imagine back then uh, when e-commerce was still, uh, still new. Amazon.com was just selling books back then. I remember when a lot of people were scared to put credit card information, their own credit card information, into the web. 
much less save it on a website so faster checkout because people were scared and why were they scared is because stuff like this people would be confused at each step just to get their product they have each interaction that a user has to go through makes them more scared and scared and scared and now you got things like uh google or sorry uh amazon echo you can just say hey alexa buy me more milk and there you go the transaction is done you'll have milk in about two days you know if you're using amazon fresh or something then it's in one day or prime now then it's in a couple of hours like stuff like that if you make it simple for the user they trust you more so if you make a website that you're designing it can be your own portfolio site or a regular brochure site but the more it's confusing for the user the more the brand gets tarnished and people stop trusting you okay um now let's go more into what ux in a bigger picture is for example this is ux okay uh blister packaging in order to open blister packaging you need to use scissors and it's so hard and it's just a nuisance the experience to open this package is not so great and this product is weird because it opens those blister packs but it's in a blister pack what <laughs> okay bad user experience um what else is user experience? Uh, this right here. Uh, this is well, iPhone 6. It's so an it's old gone. video. Okay, got it. But got it. let's watch this. Got this it. guy just bought an iPhone 6. Yeah, he's phone. the first he one. Yeah. Right. And he's opening it I'll in front this. of the I'll news station. Okay, now this is just the normal iPhone, is it? This is just a normal iPhone 6. Yeah, I didn't want okay. To All right. We're What's doing the reveal. Do? His name's Jack. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what to say right now, but... So, yeah. Um, user experience is packaging. And I don't know why, but how come Apple hasn't changed their packaging? Because air suction will take out the phone. At least put some sort of wrapper around the phone so you can still see it and it doesn't pop out. You know? So, that's user experience. You want to trust. You want to trust the package and make sure that it's not, you know, confusing. All right. Where else is real life user experience? Doors. There's this awesome YouTube video by Vox that talks about doors and user experience. There's this door on the 10th floor of the Vox Media office that I hate so much. God damn it. You ever get this door wrong? Pretty regularly. Have you seen people misuse it? All the time, every day. Constantly. I hate this door. <laughs> Me too, Kelsey. But here's the thing. As soon as you start looking for confusing doors, they are everywhere. It's push. Why? I feel so yeah, well, I'm going to put this link in uh, the forum post. But to sum it up, doors with a vertical handle is meant to be pulled. Doors with a horizontal handle is meant to be pushed. And that's it. But yet, door designers want to be all fancy and do different things. Bad user experience. Um, people who are designing doors are opting for more, um, for more aesthetics rather than experience. Okay? All right. More. Uh, let's see here. More. More right here. So, I was at the... Uh, I was at a gas station one time, and this gas station had a um, had a soda machine, has a soda vending machine in between two pumps. And I wasn't thirsty, but I was like, "Oh, that's I guess that's convenient. You know, you don't have to go into um, a store to get soda if you're just gassing up. That's cool, whatever." But I don't want any. Uh, and so, I don't know how it is in other countries, but for me, the user experience is you have to press pay with debit or credit, and then you slide your card in and out, and then you put in your, your passcode. 
and then you have to choose do you want a do you want a receipt and that's the same thing as like a, a pop-up window you know like hey before you proceed yes or no to this and then right after that it said okay do you want a car wash no it's another pop-up window no i don't want a car wash and then i get another pop-up on that screen and it said are you thirsty? Do you want a drink? You can order it from here. And I'm like, no, I just want gas. I just want to pump up my car. And so I feel like I've been hit by three pop-up windows. Okay? Okay, last thing. The hardest user experience for everyone, uh, well, most people, is driving. Driving is the hardest. Think about it. You have to learn how to turn on a car. You have to make sure your mirrors are set. Make sure that you're in a comfortable position, right? You have to make sure you know where the uh, the uh, the clicker is, the turning signal, where all the controls are, the, the steering wheels is in a good position. There's so many things you have to set up and that's all user experience. And you're not even out the garage. Once you're on the road, now you have to be constantly looking at your surroundings, making sure no one's crossing, no pedestrians are crossing the street, bike riders, uh, just other trucks, and uh, it's just so crazy. And so that's why my boy Elon Musk and Tesla, I'm happy that they announced the full self driving car because. It makes the UX much better. You tap on your app, your car comes to you, you get in, it drives drives you to your destination, and then you get out and it parks itself. So all that UX is streamlined. So what does this all mean in the whole web design business? It means that in order to make a better experience, no matter what type of website you're creating, make sure that people can use it easily, okay? Make sure you're not trying to hit them with pop-up windows that says, hey, like me on Facebook, or put your email here so I can help you subscribe to other stuff, you know? There's other ways to do that, okay? Uh, especially for those first time user experiences. You don't want people to get bombarded with things. And there's so many websites out there that still do this, but yours could be different. All right. Um, yeah, Mikhail, simplicity, exactly, you know. Um, let's go and watch one more video for you guys back with the Google Analytics. And this is my favorite. Uh, this one's called landing page optimization. And it's basically what a website is like in real life. People have bought olives also bought Chardonnay. Oh, all right. 78% <laughs> of people who viewed Chardonnay also bought what to do when he's not that into you. Mm. Well, I'm just wanting to get some olives, so... Why not buy all three? Oh, yeah, because I don't really need them. It'll give you a total saving of seven pence. Uh, I think I'll still pass, actually. Just some wine, then. No, sorry. What? I could, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm, I'm not buying this wine. I... Are you sure you want to remove that item from your basket? Yes. Why not try something new? What, and buy something totally random that I've never shown any interest in? Wilson Cape Memorial mug? Yeah, okay, I'll take the mug. Obviously I'm joking, aren't I? <sighs> so that guy got hit with a couple of pop-up windows and he accidentally added Chardonnay into his basket. Now he has to remove it and then 
the lady's like, are you sure you want to remove it? And it's like, yeah. So when you're building a site and you're adding functionality, think about it. How would this feel to a regular person? Okay, a regular person who isn't techie, but they want to find information or buy a product. They want to, when someone comes to a website, they want to get to a goal. I want to find information about X. I want to buy a product. I want to do something, sign up for something. They, these people don't need to be, should not have to be techies in order to understand a website. Okay, and now if you have a client who's asking you, oh no, add this modal or add a pop-up window and do this functionality, ask them why. What will it do? Can you can we find a better solution? Can we find a way that's more user friendly? And if they don't have an answer for that, explain to them. Have them experience a site, or even there's a site called um, User Peak. Uh, user Peak. User Peak. Yeah, peak.usertesting.com. Okay, uh, it's a free service where you can put any URL here, and they'll they'll send you a five minute video of a real person recording their screen and ex um, and answering three questions about the about the site. It's really really useful and you know it'll it'll help you get more of a real world scenario of how a website works okay so that's UX any questions <laughs> did I get through all my notes I mean I can keep going with this because uh I think everyone's, if, if you've been here before, I always think about user experience like a kitchen, but I think I've said it too much that I don't, that I don't have to keep going, but yeah. Let's see here, comments. Uh, without pop-ups, the gas stations won't sell sodas, and by the end of the day, it's the turnover that matters. That's true, but gas stations are gonna go away, hopefully, soon, because we don't need that fossil fuel. We got the sun. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, the soda machine is asking about car washing, which has nothing to do with selling soda. There is a pop. There is no pop up to sell the soda machine is between the pump. Uh, Brian. So the gas station I went to did have a soda machine in between the two pumps, and it did give give me a question. It's after it said, "Do you want a car wash?" I said no, and then right after that, it said, "Oh, do you want some soda?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> I want gas." Can I get on with my day? Hopefully we can get an electrical Porsche one day. Hopefully we can get electrical everything one day. Can you imagine how quiet the streets would be? More more quiet the streets would be with, um, yeah, like 18-wheelers that are all electric. That would be so cool. All right, we got a question here from Heiko. Question. Okay, yeah, if you have questions about Webflow, UX, web design, ask it now. Uh, if you have any Webflow.io projects that you want to link up in the chat room, I'll review it. I will be your user tester. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, okay, Heiko, if you have a CMS list that is limited to show three elements, can you make a load more button to increase that number to six and then nine? At this time, you cannot. I know what you're going for. However, you can kind of rig it where you have a dynamic list that has a range of one, uh, show three elements. Okay, so it has a range of um, one to three, you know, only show the first three. And then you put a load more button under it, and then you put a dynamic list under that and make that range six, uh, a three, no, four to six, but hide that and have an interaction that shows that one after the load more button shows up. And then for the last row, you can do the same thing from 
seven to nine. You know, hide that one and make sure that it only shows when you click on the load more. So yeah, you, we have a pagination-ish type of thing that you can do. Uh, da, 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 da. Electrical wife. Uh, they already have those. <laughs> uh, robots. Reminds me of um, Futurama. Don't date robots. <laughs> Don't date robots. <laughs> uh, soon in Japan. <laughs> I thought that was just, sorry, misunderstood. It's okay, Brian. What do you think of a JavaScript toggle inside of a tab menu? Is it too complicated for a user? I need an example of a JavaScript toggle. Um, you didn't see what you mean. Uh, okay, I see two links now. So let me look at those after questions. I'm gonna copy them and make a note to look at them. No problem, Heiko. And I know there was questions at the top, so let me get to those. Oh, and just to let you guys know, I'm trying to get Travis next month onto the workshop. Travis from Dev Tips. That's gonna be fun. Uh, here we go. Just to let you know. Okay, okay. Can you please show us what it looks like when clients are paying client billing? Uh, I can't show you right now, but you can go to our help center dot webflow dot com and it's under client billing. Here we go. How to set up client billing, and then kind of this goes you. Uh, this helps you go step by step. Um, and what it looks like is you, your client will get a email from webpayments.io it's a it's a domain name that we bought to help white label it so that way your clients if you don't want them to know they're hosting on webflow it's just coming from webpayments.io so they can pay you through that and you're good to go In digital marketing, we call that soda machine pop-up assault friction. Yes. I mean, I bet you one day it's going to be, do you want soda? How about a Snickers? Because, you know, probably Snickers bought an ad. I mean, and I know some gas stations have TVs that are playing commercials all the time. It's like, ah, oh, gosh. <laughs> Space poop. Hey, Theo. What's up? Haven't seen you in a while. Miss you, buddy. Work in progress. Okay, uh, if there's no more questions, we're gonna go through these URLs. Yeah. But yeah, keep putting your URLs, put your questions. I am here for you. We got through that topic pretty fast. Nice, even with videos. Yeah. Let me close these right here. Okay, here we go. Studio Arden. What's up? Oh, cool loader. What is this? Google Wave? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, what? Okay, so this is what I mean by user experience. I'm having a fun time. But because of this bright pink box, I know that there are there are things I can click on because there's this pink box and it has these one word things that look like links. Okay. Do the do the links have to be have to go back down after I hover? Why can't it stay up? It'd be nice if it would, were to stay up, and then when I hover off, it goes back to its normal state. Just a suggestion. Let's scroll down. What? Hold on. I'm trying to take all this in. Okay. Dude. Okay. Wait, is there... There's these little dots right here. Maybe, what is, hmm. 
Might want to fix that. I know I'm being a little, like, picky, but... Okay. Um... So there's a lot of space here, a lot of space. You have a lot of white space, that's awesome. But then you remove the white space here and here. Okay, I'm talking about the padding in this box. And there's a lot of white space here. This is beautiful right here. I love how this overlaps, cool. But then this footer, the white space is gone. It's like super cramped. Maybe keep playing with white space, make it bigger. You know, you have all the space in the world. Oh, cool. You're playing with typography, and that's live type. Mm, love it. Nice. Okay, we're playing card with the card design. Nice. Missing an icon here, but I guess this is work in progress, right? So, okay. Careful with the quality of your icons. If you're going to have a high-quality icon for, for one, you should have a high quality for all of them. This one's not high quality. Cool. Uh, I think you need a logo for this one too, but I know there isn't one. I can tell in the thumbnail, but it's okay. Like this is this is perfect right here. This one, that works. Uh, except it's not centered. The, the either center the logo or well, is it? I oh, know. I'm. Hmm. Yeah, and this one's not centered. This one's not centered because this. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I know I'm being a little picky. Sorry. All right. Good job. Good. Good job. Oh, see. Look at the white space on this. Okay. Good job, man. Oh, we got a question here. Also, when you're at the register, tons of emotion. Do you agree with the tethering of UX with UI, like UX UI? I don't. Would like to hear your thoughts and others' thoughts on it. I think there are other things better related to UX than UI. Um, let me see here. Tethering of UX to me is all about being um, understanding users that would use the product. I mean, use the product or use the website, making sure that, you know, you're empathetic to to the to the people that'll be using it, you know? Uh UI, I think it's just more of the design of the elements. And it kind of goes hand in hand because the the UI, the feel of it, like material design is UI, that's the user interface. But the experience of using that UI is very important too. So it's hand in hand. So tethering, I, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I'm sorry for the repetition, but my connection is terrible. Hi, Anna. Let's see here. We got another one. Can it go down the list here? Um, Cafe Altitude. I see your link, but please send me your webflow.io link. We don't take full domain names. Good question, Bob. Why is white space important? Um, if you can imagine those real world, uh, real, real mail that you get in your mailbox that uh, it's just full of ads. You know, everything's cramped together. There's hardly any space for your eyes to breathe. With websites, you're not limited to a certain canvas size. It's responsive. You can make it as big as you want, and it gets down smaller and smaller to a digital, uh, to a digital screen. But you can still scroll. And so here, I don't have to explain the whole story of this page right here. Okay, I can space it out as much as possible to make people want to scroll down. Scrolling down is like flipping a page in a book, you know? This is your hook right here. Your hero row is your hook. Why should someone scroll down? Well, this seems intriguing, this background and our story. So I wanna read the story. So I'm gonna turn the page and here we go. And see how much white space is around the text and the margins on the side? It helps my eyes breathe. And so I don't have to be, um, have to strain my eyes right here it feels very cramped so the user experience is feels tight 
okay? So you wanna, you wanna let eyes breathe. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, we're gonna go next one. Cons consorte three. Let's see here, what are we doing? All right. Oh, a lot of people are doing this one, nice. Is it me or does this, it looks like the font is being um, smoothed. I like it. Okay, cool. Oh, this button, is this supposed to work? You want, want to fix that. I love this when people are playing around with the breaking of sections and doing it in different ways I like that. Good job. So this one's angled. Nice cards. Uh, you can have more white space in between the card title and the icon. Actually, move the margin or padding at the top and bottom a little bit more. Space it out. Just give it a little bit more. Because see, you have a lot of space here and then the bottom. But this one seems a little bit too close. Okay, here we go. Tabs. Oh, I like these tabs. Nice. See that little blue line? It, mm, it, it's clean. I like this. In the iconography? Mm, nice. Nice. I'm happy. This is nice. Is this Flexbox? If it is, good job, sir. Dude, this right here with the angles? Man. Oh, you're making me happy. Oh, that's cool. Wait, how should you do that? Wait, how? <laughs> who did this? I forgot who did this. Well, whoever did it. That's cool. Um, if possible, I know what you're trying to go for, but it seems like you're going to a box, but this is a rounded corner. This border radius, but this one has no border radius. You might want to do a overflow hidden somewhere. Probably the parent div or something like that. Nice. One more page. Okay, so it's a single scrolling page. Nice job. All right, moving on. Uh, we got more links and questions. All right. Let me get that one. Let me get air knots up in there. Okay, cool. Nelson, it should be bordered. Is this yours, Michael? Yeah, you need to fix it, but I know what you're going for. Uh, da -da -da, we got a... Alright. Can you have a look at this one pager? Create uh no full URLs, you have to send me a webflow.io link. Aaron, I think in order to be a great UI designer, you have to have a great understanding of UX. But yeah, they're different roles most of the time. Yep. But if it's two different roles, the two people that are in the UX and UI role need to be good buddies. They have to walk around together. They don't have to hold hands, but you know, they have to go to um, user testing together and um, user interviews together and whatnot in order to completely understand how a user can get to, how a user can achieve their goals faster. Okay. Uh, hey, question number one. I've paid for one month to try Webflow, but not sure that I'll use it all the time. So can I upgrade my plan to, to annually now or have to wait for the month? You can upgrade to annually at any time. If you're having any troubles, uh, just email support at webflow.com. Okay. I can't read your name. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Hey there, not sure if I consider a work in progress, but I think I have some nice interactions. Oh, okay, cool. Hey, Nelson, is Webflow going to support pseudo elements anytime soon? Oh, like um, colon after and colon before? I would love that too. Um, I haven't heard anything yet, but put it on the wish list. Our team looks at the wish list daily just to see what the community wants. And if it seems like we're not looking at it, we are because we're trying to build some awesome stuff at the same time. 
take influence from the community to see what else we can put in uh, certain deployments. So just put it on there. All should think of being consistent when you design. Okay. Some button glitch. Hold on. Agree to agree. Okay. Nelson, since we're talking about UX today, please show us how client billing looks from client in. Uh, I would love to, but I I haven't even set mine up yet. <laughs> so, and I don't want to put like credit card information or something like that on the on the stream. But just try it out for yourself. And you'll see. And if, again, if you have any technical issues, email support at webflow.com and we'll answer them for you. The traditional coming soon question. How about the plugin marketplace? Traditional coming soon answer. Coming soon. <laughs> like, I want the plugin marketplace to be out now as much as you guys. Um, but at the same time, I want the interactions 2.0 to be out now. You know, uh, I want the API to be out now. There's so many things I want to play with. And just like you, I'm a fan. And there's so many things we want to do. There's so many things that the fans want to do. And we understand. We're doing it. I wish I could say more. But honestly, there's nothing else to say. But coming soon. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, talking about the wish list, I'm working on a search function where it will crawl the site and then index. Uh, yeah, try Swift type or Findberry. All right, next thing. Kapahina. Ka Kapahina? Four, four o. I think I've seen this one before. Have I? No, I haven't. Okay. This one's cool. Huge icons. Okay. Okay. I feel like something's missing. All right, let me translate it to English so I can see. Find the right property for you. Okay. All right. So, user experience right here. This is good. This bar right here is good. This key explains the bar. A bit these explain each other these explain each other these explain the hero row everything is connected it makes sense but here after the icons I feel lost why because I don't see myself I don't see myself as a human being understanding how this affects me okay I know I can easily search something right here, but if I'm someone who wants, to, who hasn't heard of this brand, I honestly, I have never heard of this brand. Probably it's uh, popular already in another country, but here, I don't know who this is. How can I, how can I trust it more? You can trust it more by putting a paragraph that explains the reason why this site was built. Okay, and how it can affect a person's life uh, by using this site. Also, pictures of humans. While human, while we can read articles, news articles about world news all the time, and just seeing text, humans still like to look at other humans, read them the news. That's why we still have news channels all the time. That's why we have, um, you know, it's it makes it more legitimate. It makes it feel like I'm part of the conversation because I'm looking at another human being that we're kind of talking to each other, even though I know we're not. So add a picture of a human and right next to it, put some text that explains why this is the site someone should be using. Okay, so human connection, very important. Okay, um, no, no other questions. I think that's it. All right, yeah, so that's the only thing. Pictures of human faces, yes, yes. Okay, rum, rup. 
pin H? What pin? I don't know. Alright. What you got here? Human! Okay. Let's see here. Someone. This is something about water. Like fresh water, I think. Probably a charity. Yep. Nice card design here. I like this. What's this do? Okay, that goes to the project. Alright, so work in progress. I like these. These are cool. Uh, so they don't link anywhere. Okay. Uh, a little bit more white space at the bottom here to match the top, I think. Could be wrong. It's just a small thing. I like this right here. Telling people to keep looking down. Uh... Can you probably repeat that down here? So if you're going to have more sections, probably alternate that. That'd be a nice little touch. But yeah, this one's pretty good. Nothing else. Okay, 404. So work in progress. All right, good job. Uh, Bartosz, how can you show how the process looks for client billing? Um... Yeah, probably we'll do it on the next week's show, like how to deal with clients inside of Webflow. I think that'd be good. All right, here we go. Next one, guestready.webflow.io. I think this is cafe something. Here we go. Hotel style Airbnb management services for short term rentals. Your space, guest ready. All right. Um. Nice. Okay, yeah, I like it. Simple. Good start. Um, make money like a super hustle for y'all. So, my mind went straight to Airbnb thinking like, okay, I can search for something. And maybe it's because I was in that other uh, website, that campaign, huh? But uh, the background tells me it's a rental, but there's nothing that's telling me it's a management service. Hmm. And so this is where custom photography can come in, you know, hire... Uh, hire a model or two where one is holding like a tablet and another person has the keys to their house or something like that and and they're inside the house that the person wants to um, that wants help renting out their place so stuff like that you know um, this is a good start but the text when you have a when you have a hero row make sure that the text explains the background and the background explains the text. So it's all connected. Okay. Thanks, Bart. I'll look at that URL. Okay, getting started. Contact us today. Yeah, it's a good start. Uh, this one right here is gray. Why is um, that? Icon gray and nothing else is gray here. You might want to check on that. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. There, there's a lot of things I would fix, but I would need to like go through this more in detail. Because it's like, are you guys affiliated with airbnb in some way are you not um if you have services it'd be nice to list them all out if you have some sort of um payment chart or something a pricing chart that would need to have its own page um uh, that's what miss that's what's missing a workflow like step one a simple workflow step one 
uh, sign up. Step two, we management, uh, we manage it for you. Step three, profit. You know, something like that that explains uh, what you guys are doing. Okay. All right. Um, to answer the question, I'm gonna look at Bart's link really quick. Client billing from a client perspective. Oh, thank you, Bart. Okay. So yeah. And I think you could white label the logo so Webflow isn't there. Uh, let me know, Bart, if that's correct. You can white label this. Yeah. Sweet. Clicky. Of course it's not incorrect. <laughs> I mean, it's not correct. There we go. Mm-hmm. And there you go. And that's how your client would pay in client billing. Woohoo! Yay! Uh, da, 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 da. There is usage rights using Airbnb. Yeah, build your brand, not Airbnbs. Yep, exactly. All right, here we go. Airnauts. I think Bart worked on this. Bartosh worked on this. Or oh no, no, no! This is. Ooh. Okay, this is this is funky. I like funk. This is cool. It's their logo, but it's like, I don't know. That's so cool. All right. It's so small. Interesting. And then there's a video. This is so interesting. Okay, sticky. What? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay, I'll play. <laughs> do they do music videos that oh services right there okay this is a work in progress good job so far i like it it's super different it's funky oh i want to see this when it's done please let me know when this is done it's like a lot of white space but then it's a different grid when you scroll down oh good job Good job. All right. Cartoffelbesk. I'm ruining the name. I'm so sorry. Sebastian, good job with that one uh, with the Air Not site. Good job. Uh, oh, this is cute. <laughs> I love illustrations. Okay. Uh, cookies. Okay, so that's uh, the cookie disclaimer. Okay. Okay, uh, guest ready. Uh, the person who did guest ready, take a note from this. This is a workflow, and it's fun. Happy person on the laptop, then something happens, and profit. That's what I'm talking about, you know? Three-step workflow, and yeah. The, uh, whoever did this illustration, um... You should post your illustration services on the freelance f forum, on the Webflow forums. I know a lot of people who need illustration work, so if you're up for it, if you're up for that, wow, good job with these. That's cute. What is this, Firefox? <laughs> uh, that button! Oh, that's cute. Okay, 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 I like it. Okay. Potato. <laughs> I don't know what this site's about, but I want some baked potatoes now. <laughs> oh, okay. So send potatoes somewhere. If you went this far, hello YouTube, Instagram feed. Okay. Um, what? <laughs> oh, internet. Anyways, this is cute right here. Let's see here. Let's translate. Send a message on a potato. Oh, okay. That's cute. Get 10% off. See, this right here. 
right here, this button, the bottom left, okay? Get 10% off. This is what I mean. This person could, could have easily bombarded someone with a pop-up model on the, when someone first came here and said, hey, if you put your email address, if you give us your email address, we'll give you 10% off. No, this person didn't do that. This person just made it fixed on the bottom left. So it's there. It's kind, it's not annoying, but it's just like kind of poking like, hey, 10% off. And like, okay, I choose, my eyes will choose to ignore it. Goodbye. It's like, oh, okay, but I'm not going to leave. Okay, that's fine. You're not intruding in my uh, story reading. Okay, you're not, you're not intruding in anything. And next thing you know, I'm like, you know what? If I get to the bottom of this, I'm like, yeah, this this looks pretty cool. I might do that. All right, what's this 10% off stuff? Oh, I have to put my email address. You know what? That's fine. You know why? This dog is cute. Doing it. Tap it, tap it, type. Cool. You got a conversion. See? That's all you need to do. You don't have to get in someone's face. You just say, hey, by the way, 10% off. If you like it. Cool. First step, steal underpants. Second step, third step, profit. If that's the business you're running, Theo, <laughs> well, uh, try to type something into the field. Uh, what field? Send potato. Okay, let's see here. Uh, hello, world. Order now. Oh, okay. Nice something into the field what f oh wait what did it change oh no it didn't okay uh, what field are you talking about <laughs> video not yet type and see potato what Potato. Oh, dude, I didn't notice that. Okay, how can how can that be? How can that show more? Because I didn't notice that. I was just focusing here. My eyes was focused right here. I did not know it was being printed on the potato. Maybe some sort of interaction that happens. Hmm, I don't know, but that's pretty cool. Make fries, not war. <laughs> that's cool. Good job. All right. Great job, everyone. Oh, wait, the potato gets bigger? Oh, okay. There's a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Once I start typing, it'd be nice to see the potato kind of kind of get bigger, smaller. You know? Something like that. Or bounces. Good, good ideas, Brian and Nick. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. The potato gets bigger really fast, so it's like, oh, hey, I'm riding on the potato. Or make it bounce. Something to make the potato more uh, apparent that I'm typing on it. Potato. Okay. Did I miss anything? Uh, oh, here we go. I converted this free PSD into a clonable web flow just for learning and for fun. Okay, crunch. Crouch. Nice. Good job. Nice and clean. It'd be nice uh, for testimonials. It'd be nice to have a photo of the per of a person on each one. Cool, cool. Awesome team. And this is clonable?
good job on this. Thank you for, um, here we go. Design my sure web, web flowed. We made it. We made it. We're a verb. Isn't that the thing? Like, if your brand becomes a verb, then you've made it. You know, like, oh, Google that. This site has been web flowed. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, good job. See, Alexander, you're already getting some, some people that want your services. Illustrations. Web flowed. All right, guys. Um, Nita's here. That means we have to end it. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I'm going to take a couple more questions. Welcome, Nita. A couple more questions, a couple more uh, webflow.io links, and then we are done for this week. Blaze. Uh, I don't know how to say that. Lavo oh, I'm not going to try to say it. Oh, preloader. Preloader. What are we doing? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Alright, something's happening. I like the zoom in of the balloons. That's cool. Alright. Flex box, I'm hoping. Nice. That's pretty. And it could be a small thing, but careful, this this icon doesn't seem to match the rest as far as style goes. Again, small thing. I love the white space, I love what you're doing with the flex box. Okay. Love the animated icons. Okay, good job. Okay, work in progress. Oh, we got a blog. Butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Anything else? Contact, okay. All right. Nicely done. Um. So you're using the Twitter blue color on their icon. This guy, I don't know, but I'm guessing that's their brand color. This is the Twitter brand color, but yet you don't use the Facebook blue or the LinkedIn blue. So just to keep things consistent, I'm guessing, can you make this white and this icon white as well? Again, small things. Okay. Right. Freeloader squad. <laughs> Hapa.webflow.io. All right, here we go. Trevor, what you doing? What you doing? Okay. Nice. Okay. I did not know it's a clothing company, but I read it. I, I thought it was some sort of group as I'm scrolling down. I'm like, okay, flags. Okay, it's mixed eth ethnic heritage. Okay, so it's something to do with the world. And then... This explains the brand even more. Life, love, and you. And then, boom, shirts sure, in the background. Oh, okay, Hapa Gear. Got it. So it's all about um, clothing that's all about the world. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, maybe this could be a background video of waves. You know, that would bring this out a little bit more. Yeah, a background video of waves. Good job. 
Okay, guys. Any other quick? Did I working on personal development? All right. All right. Time to go through my sign-offs. If there's no other questions, um, before I do it, thank, thank you guys. Every week, uh, our community gets bigger and bigger, and. I can't thank you guys enough. Like I said before, I'm just a huge fan just like you guys. So thank you so much for being geeks, you know, being Webflow nerds and making awesome stuff. Oh, what's this? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, you guys are awesome. Let's do this every week. So I do this um, stream every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And I do it out of love, guys. Uh, I want you guys to help build the future of web design. Okay? Because that's why we're all here. We want to make everyone's lives beautiful. Not only our own, but also our clients. We want to make sure that our clients get their goals achieved. And if their goals are achieved, then their clients' goals are achieved. And it just keeps going and going and going. We want to make great user experiences, great websites, so people can all reach their goals and we can reach higher goals beyond that. The, the world of web is never ending. It's always changing. What's next? I don't know. Virtual reality, augmented reality, um, designing websites on Mars. I don't know. But getting there is the fun part all right so let's all get there together usual sign offs uh if you have any account billing or technical issues email the support team over at support at webflow.com we'll get to it as soon as possible for any design issues custom coding or stuff like that the wonderful wonderful global community at forum.webflow.com will help you out and if they do and you learn please Pass that forward. Teach someone else. Help them as well. And we can all grow together that way. Uh, social media, facebook.com slash webflow or on Twitter at webflow app. You can hit me up on Twitter. It's at webflow underscore Nelson or at the pixel geek. Um, anything else I'm missing? I think that's about it. I'm hope I'm trying to get Travis from Dev Tips onto this show, trying to do for next month. And if you haven't been following his Webflow um, first time user experience that he's been posting on his channel, just go to youtube.com and look for Dev Tips and just watch him go through it. You know, you probably might you might learn a thing or two. All right, or in Riley's case, you might win a whole year's worth of Webflow service. So yeah, check out Dev Tips, Travis. Uh, Travis, if you're watching, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, to everyone else, like I always say, make the web beautiful. See you guys. <laughs>